fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Sailor Sam is the smartest boy who ever shouted ship a high. He can weather any storm that blows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Good old Cheerios. They got go. So nourishing because they're made from oats with minerals, vitamins, and proteins that your body needs. Yes, indeed. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day off right. Does all sorts of good things for your body. Helps you have strong bones and muscles, good red blood, and healthy nerves. So every morning, take on a bowl of Cheerios and milk for real go power. You like that wonderful toasted oat flavor, too. Downright delicious. Come to think of it, Cheerios is one of the tastiest muscle-building foods you can eat. Try Cheerios and you'll hear... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! And the Lone Ranger and Toto urged their mounts toward the brink of the precipice. Oh, 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 oh. They pulled oh. rein and dismounted. Far below them, they could see a riderless horse and a man lying face down at the side of the trail. Looks as if he rode into an ambush. Ah, twenty far from town, Kimasabi. Them not here shots there. We'll ride down and see if he's still alive. Ah. Easy, steady, big fella. Come on, silver. Get him up, scout. Turned the fallen rider over. The moonlight flashed from the badge he was wearing. Him, United States Marshal. Yes, Toto. Greg Warren. The Marshal was taken to the Lone Ranger's camp, but it was not until morning that he opened his eyes. When he saw the masked man, he smiled in recognition and tried to get up. Oh, uh, no, Greg. Take it easy. Oh, glad to see you, Mister. I'm glad you're feeling better. What happened last night? Oh, I don't know. I must have been sound asleep. Heard the shots, got hit, that's all. Well, uh, what brings you to Harding County? Uh, a letter. My saddlebag. Read it. Right. The Lone Ranger found the letter and read it. What letter say? It's from Mark Tolliver, Kimosabe. He says that Mike Jennison shot and killed his foreman, and that the sheriff is afraid to arrest him. Well, is it the famous Mike Dennison, the, the one who used to be town marshal in Deadwood? Uh huh. It's the same fellow. I don't blame the sheriff. I don't care much for the job myself. You're not going to be able to move for at least a week, Greg. But even if you could, you might not arrest Mike. Why not? Well, Mike is working for Judd Sayer. And Tolliver's been trying to put Sayer out of business. Sayer hired Mike to protect his cattle. I'm still wondering who drag ghosted you last night, Greg. It doesn't sound like Mike at all. And there's no reason why Tolliver's men should do it. Not after sending for me. There are plenty of bad fellow in Hardin City. Yes, that's true. Roof Holden runs a town, and they work for him. The sheriff's one of his men. Roof might not like the idea of having a United States Marshal around. Sounds to me like one was needed bad. Ranchers fighting, a town full of crooks. <laughs> you say I can't move for a week? That right. Well, something's got to be done. I wish I could swear you in as a deputy, mister. Well, why can't you? Why? Why, your mask, for one thing. I could wear a disguise instead of a mask. 
Would you? Well, I don't have a deputy's badge, but uh, you could wear mine. You'd be acting for me. Just find out what's going on. Question Mike. Question the Tolliver crew. And try to find out who shot you. Uh, yeah, that too. Would you do it? Why, of course, Greg. I'll ride your horse. I'll wear a bandage around my head. I'll let whoever shot you think their ambush failed completely. At 8 o'clock the following evening, Clem Davis, the sheriff of Harding County, was just about to blow out the lamp and head for a scheduled meeting with Ruth Holden at the mansion house when the door of his office opened. A tall, broad-shouldered man wearing a marshal's badge stood there. Why, Marshal, you're surprised to see me, Sheriff. Surprised? Uh, no, no, not at all. I got a letter saying you were coming. Greg Warren, isn't it? Glad to meet you. No, not surprised at all. It's that bandage. You've been wounded. It's nothing, believe me. Are you sure? I'm positive. Now, if you have a little time, I'd like to talk over this shooting I'm supposed to investigate. Well, of course. I have affidavits here from half a dozen of Tolliver's men. Yeah, here they are. They all say the same thing. They were rounding up some lazy tea steers when Mike Dennison rode up and ordered them off the Sayer spread. Clancy, the foreman, refused to go without his cows. And Mike shot him dead. Doesn't sound like Mike. Why, you, you know him? I've heard of him. He never shoots without giving the other man a chance to draw. I'm just telling you what Tolliver's men said. You can read their statements for yourself. Do you have one from Mike? No, no. Uh, according to Sayer, the Lazy T crew were rustling. I wouldn't put it past them either. There's a feud between the two ranchers. Is that why you refused to arrest Mike? Refused? Yes. Tolliver lies if he said that. I, I just haven't been able to find him. I'll take a ride out to the Sayer ranch. Oh, uh, how do you get there? It's west of town. Just follow the main trail till it branches out three ways. The branch to the north is the one you want. Well, where do the others lead? Straight ahead to the Lazy T. And the south trail? A uh, shortcut to the pass. You'd only take that if you wanted to head for Mexico. I see. Well, thanks, Sheriff. And you going out there tonight? Well, I may as well. Why not? Not that you'll find out anything about Mike, but... The stairs will put you up for the night anyway. Better accommodation than you'll find at the mansion house. Well, I, I wish you luck, Marshal. Thanks. You'll need it if you run into Mike. Just happen to, I mean. They're not lying when they say he has the fastest draw in the West. The Lone Ranger mounted Greg Warren's black and rode out of town. The sheriff watched him go and then hurried down the street to the mansion house. Toto, who had been waiting in the shadows, followed him to the hotel, through the crowded lobby, and into the adjoining cafe. Howdy, Joe. Where's Ruth? In the back room. He's been asking for you. I've been detained. Toto watched the sheriff walk the length of the bar and enter the room at the rear. Then the Indian left the cafe and circled the building. The window of the back room was closed. So was the window on the floor above. There was a ladder lying on the ground, and Toto placed it against the building. He climbed it to the second-story window. It was unlocked. He opened it and climbed inside. The only light in the room came through a chink in the flooring from the room below. The opening wasn't large enough to see through, but Toto could hear plainly, and he recognized several voices. The sheriff's, Ruth Holden's, and another that belonged to one of Ruth's henchmen, Trigger Gordon. I swear I'm telling the truth now. I was talking to him about five minutes ago. He's on his way out to the Sayer Ranch. Well, Trigger? Yeah, I told you how it was. I hit him all right. I was going to make sure I finished him. You were going to. Yeah, but two riders are coming down the trail. I had to clear out. We'd better hold off for a while, huh, Ruth? Yeah. Oh, no, we can't. Gonzales wants those cattle at the border by the first of the week or the dealer's off. You get out the lazy tea right away. All right. Now, you got the story straight? I was looking for Mike. I came to this box canyon. Uh, where is it exactly? Oh, uh, telling trigger. It's on Sayers Land, about a mile north of the boundary between the two ranches. West of the creek, half a mile. Yeah, yeah, that's right. A sort of barricade had been built across the opening of the canyon, and I decided to investigate. Inside the canyon, there were 50 head of lazy tea cattle. I'll say to Tolliver, 
Tolliver, I don't want any gun playing. Uh, uh, you uh, let uh, me... Uh, 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 What's so funny? Uh, uh, I didn't hear him explode no gun play. <laughs> That'd be a first-class battle. <laughs> yeah. Way down on the lazy T South range, you'll be driving the big herd to market. <laughs> Get going, Sheriff. dismounted in front of the Sayre Ranch House when the front door opened and the rancher stepped out with a shotgun ready for action. His daughter was directly behind him. Where are you? Put your hands up. Oh, he's wearing a badge. He's too big for the sheriff. The badge says United States Marshal. A marshal? What do you want here? I want to have a talk with you. Any objection? Ask him in, Paul. Come in, Marshal. Thanks. Sit down, please. Thank you. What's your business here, Marshal? There's no sense in pretending, Paul. We know why he's here. Then will you tell me where I can find Mike Dennison? What do you want with him? We know that, too. Tolliver's told you a pack of lies, and you mean to arrest Mike. I want to find out the facts in the case. Mike's been accused of murder. You mean to arrest him and hold him for trial. That's the only way he can clear himself. I'm warning you, Marshal, for your own good. Leave him alone. If you should ever meet and try to use your gun, well, you must have heard of Mike's reputation. You'll die. Someone just rode up. Just one of the heads. I do hope it is. A... Oh, no, Mike! <laughs> We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's what the happy people have to say. Eating our Wheaties and the doo-doo-doo and okay. Okay. Sure, take champion Bob Cousy, who can really make a basketball do tricks. Bob was born in New York. Plays with the famous Boston Celtics. <laughs> Leads them all in fast break play. And Koozie knows the champion way. Starts his day the Wheaties way. <laughs> Take Neil Johnston, another great champ from the East. Say Neil has been eating Wheaties since he was three feet tall instead of six foot eight. Grew up a long ways on them, didn't he? Mighty appetizing eating. And there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-do
And when he had finished... Oliver steals our cattle, Holden steals his. Turn about fair play, I'm in. You've got to stop, Holden. We? If necessary, I'll try to do it alone. But I'd like your help. I'm willing to ride with you, Marshal. All right, then. We're all with you. Good. Now, where is the best place to stop, Holden? Well, they'll have to drive the cattle through the pass. We head west from here and take the creek trail south. We should be able to get to the pass ahead of them. And that's what we'll do. Toto, you ride straight for Tolliver's. Tell him what you've told us. Sheriff of Tolliver now. Maybe him say Tonto lies. If he doesn't want to believe you. Now, wait a minute, Paul. There's something in what the Indian says. I'll ride with you, Tonto. I can convince Tolliver you're telling the truth. I doubt it. Then I'll write him a note. Well, that might do it. And if the word of the United States Marshal isn't good enough for him, he deserves to lose his cattle. The Lone Ranger wrote the note. Tonto and Molly started for the Tolliver Ranch with it. Get him up, get up, get up. The others headed west. Get him up. Hard riding brought them to the pass ahead of the outlaws, but following the creek trail, they had seen no sign of the rustler. There was a full moon, and hardly had the men taken cover under the Lone Ranger's direction. Then Mike spotted a cloud of dust to the northeast. Here they come, Marshal. Yes. Now hold your fire until I give you the word. I'll give them a chance to surrender. Fifteen minutes later, it was possible to make out the riders at the point of the herd. That's Ruth Holden. And Trigger. The Lone Ranger stepped into the open and held up his hand. Stop where you are! Come on, Let him have! The Lone Ranger hit the ground as both Ruth and Trigger opened fire. A bullet chipped the rock that gave him shelter. No surrender there. Open fire. There were twenty men with Ruth. There were only six with the Lone Ranger. The outlaws rallied around their leader and tried to blast out the defenders of the pass. But after two of the rustlers had been wounded, they deserted their exposed position and urged their mounts to the rear of the milling herd. What are they up to now? You think they'll make a break for it, Marshal? No. Don't show yourself. They shoot again. Not at me. They're trying to stampede the herd. But through here, we'll be trampled underfoot. If we stay where we are. Men, they're trying to drive the cattle through, stampede them. Now take to the higher ground, both sides of the pass. Find what cover you can. The gang will be riding through behind the herd. Here they come. Get moving. Pass. As the steers raced for the opening of the pass, the cowboys started to climb the sheer walls of the pass. There was little cover for them there, but the higher ground was all that could save them from the thundering hoofs. The cattle stormed past. Then the Lone Ranger caught the sharper sound of hoofs that were shod. Horses. He caught a glimpse of Holden's white Stetson. Oh. Oh. Hey, Holden, he got Ruth. The cloud of dust still obscured the opening of the pass. But the Lone Ranger knew that Ruth had been dropped from his saddle and that the outlaws had pulled up. Their confused shouts told the Lone Ranger that they were completely disorganized by the loss of their leader. And a moment later, he heard them urging their mounts away from the pass. He scrambled down to level ground and called for Silver. Hey, Silver! The cowboys gathered around him. The Silver raced from the shelter of the trees, the Mustangs following close behind. Here's Ruth. Wounded? Yeah. Not bad, though. Knocked out when he fell. No, the wound isn't serious. I'll bandage it. Now we'll tie his hands and feet so he can't get away when he comes to. When Holden's wound had been bandaged and he had been bound hand and foot, the cowboys swung into their saddles. Hey, the outlaws were heading east. They'll run into Tolliver's crew. Let's hope. Come on, Silver. Get up, get up. The Lone Ranger gave Silver his head, and the pursuit began. After riding due east for a mile, the outlaws changed their course, and a moment later, the Lone Ranger and his companion saw the reason. Oliver's men were heading toward them. The outlaws opened fire. The running gunfight continued for half an hour. Both outlaws and cattlemen dropped from their saddles. But finally, the outlaws' horses could be driven no further. The remaining members of the band threw down their guns. Their prisoners secure, the cattlemen began to care for the wounded. Toward morning, the Lone Ranger and Toto returned to the camp with Ruth Holden. Oh, 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 oh,
quite easy. Is he still alive? No. Uh -huh. Marshal? Yes, Molly. Easy, silly big fellow. Oliver wants to talk to you. Oh, where is he? This way. He's badly wounded. Better take a look at him, Toto. Uh -huh. I've done what I could for him, but I don't know. Here he is. Mr. Tolliver, here's the marshal. Oh, I'm glad he got back. Me, look at wound. Oh, there's nothing you can do for me, Indian. Oh, we'll see. I've been an awful fool. In what way? Must have been Holden's men who were rustling my cows. Tolliver, will you admit your men were rustling on the day your foreman was shot? Yes. Getting even, we thought. And Mike shot in self-defense? Yes. Well, where is the sheriff? They locked him up. Back at the ranch. We'll pick him up there. Good. Uh, I'm glad you came along when you did, Marshal. The Holden gang were taken to jail, and two weeks later, a judge arrived in Harding City, and they were tried. Marshal Warren was well enough to handle the case against them, and after they were sentenced, the judge called him aside. Marshal, this was an open and shut case. Evidence was conclusive. There's no doubt about that. But I want to point out that you neglected to produce an important witness for the prosecution. Well, who was that, sir? Your own deputy. <laughs> I guess that's something I'll tell my grandchildren. But I'll let you in on the secret right now. I'll say, once upon a time, when outlaws were running wild in Harding County, your old grandpa had a special deputy. A mighty special deputy. Believe it or not, he was the Lone Ranger. feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Prendel Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.